Hello everyone, it's been a while, but here we are with a new video in which I want to show you how to make this exact scene using Blender and Cycles in addition to the Geoscatter add-on. We are going to be using a cabin model from the 3D warehouse as a base mesh, and we are going to be focusing on improving the geometry, giving it materials and a nice environment to sit on top of. As always, all of the necessary assets are linked down below, so feel free to follow along if this is interesting for you. As you could see, we have already imported our geometry using the Colada option. Now the next step would be going ahead and improving it. And before doing that, in order to actually be able to visualize things and see what we are doing, I am going to set the environment background color to white. That way it's easier for me to see. Now let's select everything that's metallic and let's merge vertices by distance. You can try to press X and delete the unnecessary geometry, but in some cases that may ruin the effect for you. Make sure to apply the scale. It always has to be set to one, right? On every single object, otherwise you will have undesirable effects with adding bevels or with the materials or for example when parenting this to a different sort of object within the house itself let's add a weighted normals and tick keep sharp that way we have really nice normals and we don't have any issue with the shading at all so let's give it a blackish color so obviously not exactly black but a value of 20 would work okay. Let's set the metallic to one. And in order to have nice variations in the roughness, let's add a noise texture. Press Ctrl T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And let's play with the scale. Give it a bit more details in addition to playing with the roughness. Now, this is good, but we need more control over the actual contrast. So let's add a color ramp in which we can lessen the contrast and make it more shallow that we don't have too much variation which is not something that we really really want let's plug this into the roughness and go ahead and see what it gives us However, it seems to be very, very shiny. So let's add a math node in between and use the multiply mode. That way we can multiply it by something like 2.8 or 3. So it's way less shiny. Now, this is practically just eyeballing it and don't have any value, exact value in mind. And as you could see, I'm going back and forth and playing with the color ramp until I get something that I kind of like. You can use a concrete texture, you can use a smudge texture, you can use whatever texture. However, this seems to be the fastest way. Now, as you can see, I'm just playing back and forth until I get something that I like. Now, even then, it still looks quite dark, which I'm going to be fixing later on. Now, for the planks, we are going to be using the actual texture that came with the file. And, you know, this comes to show that if you know your way around materials you can get a let's say bad texture you know very quite re low resolution not very optimized right it's not an actual pbr an entire set of textures but it can look okay now should you do this on every project definitely no go ahead and download a free black texture and use that instead but i just wanted to show you how to do this and this is most useful, especially if you have something like a marble that doesn't have any textures online, for instance. Now for the tiles, I want to show you a really nice trick in order to add actual geometry and displacement without having any displacement texture. So the first thing, we want to normalize the geometry and make everything more or less consistent in terms of density. So as you could see, I'm just going ahead and adding some loop cuts, playing around with the knife tool and giving it more subdivisions. Now the next step would be using the albedo texture as our displacement. So let's add a displace modifier, right? 
go ahead and set the same albedo texture within the texture settings and it's going to give us something now make sure to be using the uv coordinates and apply the scale most definitely now looks very wrong but we are going to improve it by blurring it now the key is to go to the mapping and the sampling right and you want to up the size which will blur out the texture for you and that will give you an actual displacement map now this doesn't always work you might need to go ahead and take it to photoshop turn it to a black and white image right and using the gaussian blur no but this doesn't really always work as well so this is really the easiest way to go ahead and do it not the cleanest way not the industry standard way of doing it right but it gets the job done if you're short on time now this looks quite fine you can go ahead and add some thickness to it with the solidify modifier but let's jump on to add an actual environment plate by using the ENT landscape add-on quite useful you can go ahead and just use a plane and play with proportional editing in addition to a couple of displacements with cloud texture you know you can use your own rocky terrain texture right feel free to go ahead and do that and set up your camera using a focal length of 24 to 35 really depends on how much distortion you want or what is the effect that you actually want you can even use 55 if you want All right but for me personally in this scenario i like something to the extent of 24. i'm just using a placeholder color right it's going to be hidden with foliage anyway but feel free to use an actual texture as well if you want now the texture that came in with the file for the wood is unusable extremely low resolution terrible will give us very bad results so just go ahead and locate a wood plank texture that you have or just regular wood right i'm using like literally a wardrobe texture right plug in it playing with the uvs until it kind of makes sense doesn't have to be absolutely exact unless you really really want it to and you know this scene took me like i don't know like 30 minutes to make from scratch to finish however for a real portfolio piece i would highly recommend that you invest at least 10 times the amount of time i have invested here right now for the lighting we are going to be using the trustworthy sky texture recently i rarely use hd rise within blender right this guy actually renders way faster gives me way more control and you know very similar quality it's time to now add our biomes using the geo scatter add-on i am going to use in the evermotion 15th anniversary pack which costs like five dollars extremely cheap and probably the best quality out there in terms of biomes not as optimized right so you have to kind of do that on your own as you could see extremely extremely slow as opposed to something like the dynamic pine biome which is very nice and very very optimized now as you could see i'm just going ahead and adjusting this rain adding a weight map in order to remove any foliage that's hiding the house and right on top of the camera and inside of the house so we don't want any trees sticking out of the house go to the culling masks to each layer and enable it add the vertex group and you now should have a nice environment as a base now as you could see i'm just going back and forth with the vertex weight as well as playing with the seed until i get something that i really really like feel free to invest a bit of time here it's totally worth it i'm telling you go ahead and adjust the actual terrain as well we don't want any dirt on top of the planks of the porch in front of the house play with the camera play with the lighting as well i'm setting the sun rotation to something like 28 the sun elevation excuse me and playing with the sun rotation until i get a nice lighting profile you can set the ozone to four you can set the altitude to 5000 as you could see i'm just adding a hill 
on top and behind just so I can get some nicer shadows as well and a nicer background. I don't want to see the horizon at all. Now I want some shadows. I don't want every single tree to be in light, right? I want a bit of contrast in the scene, so I'm adding fake clouds. I highly don't recommend that you add actual VDBs. Very overkill, definitely not worth it. So just add a regular plane, give it a principal BSDF, and add a noise texture. This noise texture should be fed into the opacity section of the principal BSDF, and you can use a color ramp in order to up the contrast. Go ahead and visualize things from afar until you get something that you like. As you can see, I'm playing with the scale and I set up the details very highly and I'm just moving around. You know, you can go ahead with the 4D mode in order to have a bit more control, but in this case, totally fine. As you know, light blockers are extremely a nice tool, you know, for storytelling. It adds very nice contrast and it's just a way to kind of obscure things that you don't want to be seen the most, right? And all around, it's very nice to have some nice sort of cloud shadows, which will ground this in reality more. Now, as you can see, I'm just resetting out of the camera, playing with the focal length again, just all around trying to get a nice composition within the scene. I want to change the color of the sky, but I don't really want to change the lighting. I've shown this technique like 20 times already, but I can't stress how nice it is. I use it on a daily basis at work. At work, we use 3ds Max and Corona for the most part. And it has this nice environment override, right? Which this is the equivalent of that if you were ever wondering. So add a light path node and plug it into the mix factor. Play with the saturation, you know, don't go too overboard. You don't want this to be very stylized. It's totally valid if you actually want it to be, but then again, you might have to stylize other sections of the actual scene in order for it to be cohesive. So now I'm just hiding the small foliage and just keeping the young trees and the full grown trees in order to visualize what I'm doing here, just so I can save up a bit of time in the loading. As you can see, we already have a quite, let's say, realistic setup here and without any effort at all. You know, this is extremely low effort and for an architect or for a drafter, to actually know how to do this is an extremely extreme upgrade to using something like a basic Enscape setup or a basic ArchiCAD render. Now, as for the color management, I generally recommend use AGX. You can use Filmic if you want, but within my testings, AGX seems to give always a nicer result. Every now and then, I might keep it as you know, just for the sake of it. I like the sky texture, for example, better, so I just keep it. Even though technically AGX is superior, you can add some depth of field. You can play with the shift Y and try to get a nicer composition very, very early on. Now, you can go ahead and take this to Photoshop or Lightroom, improve this, you know, if you're very serious about it, you can actually take it to stable diffusion. Go ahead and enhance the details using like a very nice model. Keep it very subtle, right? You don't want that ugly AI-ish look. However, you can always do that, especially for humans or like animals. If you want to add like a human drinking coffee on the porch or just like a dog sleeping there. I'm using the camera post, the excuse me, the Photographer 5 add-on, if I'm not mistaken, and it has this camera post effect option here. So I'm just playing with the white balance, giving it a slight tint. I don't want the scene to be too overly greenish, giving it some vignette, as well as some streaks and possibly bloom, but make sure to keep this 
very, very, very subtle. We don't want this to look extremely, extremely ugly. Now this scene took me like 30 minutes at most, probably 40 minutes, 10 of 10 minutes of which were actually waiting for Brenda to respond after adding certain settings within the add-on. As I mentioned, make sure to not go overboard with these biomes. They are very high in resolution and in geometry. So you have a very nice result in no time at all. If you found this useful, subscribe. And here is the final result in front of you. Very, very nice, very, very simple and straightforward. So until next time, take care and enjoy yourself.